Hey everybody, welcome to the latest edition of Sketchy Go Ichi. I'm your host, Roger Andrews. I'm the artist around here, and I, like everyone else, is in love with Cobra Kai. Uh, formerly on YouTube channel, actually I assume it's still on YouTube, but now on Netflix, and I imagine if it's on Netflix, everyone on Earth is watching it now. Um, so I was inspired to share with you this piece that I had done of Ralph Macchio as the Karate Kid back in the 80s, um, and I think it is, I think I nailed the likeness on it. You I'll let you be the judge, but what I definitely nailed is the technique on how to capture that likeness. And it's what I like to, uh, to impart upon anyone who's interested in learning that type of thing. So if you are interested, stay tuned and enjoy. Sketchy go itchy. Yes, indeed. Pop culture portraits. The Karate Kid. Now, before we get too far into this, I am definitely going to resist the temptation to do a bunch of groan-inducing um, 1980s puns, especially as they relate to this movie. Um, for those who are unaware, or I'm going to shake you up from that rock you've been living under, or if you're just too young to realize, um, The Karate Kid, seminal movie of the 1980s, um, the soundtrack, everything about it is 80s. The hair, the soundtrack, the clothes, the everything you can possibly imagine. But what's great about it is the theme. The themes are universal. The themes we can connect with. It's probably why it is indeed such a classic. For, you know, what I would imagine was a fairly low budget movie at the time. And a little piece of uh, Karate Kid trivia was directed by the same guy who directed Rocky. So um, another one <laughs> that uh, if you're uninitiated to Rocky, uh, hey kids, go back and check out some films from the past. Um, but anyways, as far as art, let's get into it. If you notice on this particular portrait, um, I chose to start with the hair. It doesn't. It isn't always the case, to, you know. With when I do these pieces, I think sometimes the mood uh, directs me or dictates that I start with the eyes, or sometimes I just do the overall facial structure or head structure, and then. Some cases I, you know, dive right into the hair, and I'm sure anyone who's seen some of my previous videos will notice the uh, the variety of ways that I try to tackle these uh, these portrait images. And I should mention this now: uh, the reason I share these, um, well, the reason I share this particular one is because, as I mentioned in the intro, um, I watched Cobra Kai both seasons on YouTube, and then realized it was on Netflix. And then it occurred to me, yeah, there's going to be a whole new audience um, because of the popularity of Netflix for the series Cobra Kai. And, um, and a lot of that audience may have never seen the original film, which is, um, it's not crazy. I mean, it's, you know, things slip through time. But this is such a, such a good movie, such a good heartwarming story, kind of a David and Goliath thing. Um, it, the themes are relevant and it's just it's just a classic ain't no way around it and so I thought to kind of honor the classic I would kind of dig out this this image that I had done um, backstory on the image itself the, the drawing that you see in uh, kind of uh, happen before your eyes it was a piece of art that I was doing I was doing on Facebook I was doing a series of uh, pop culture figures throughout um, recent and I say recent, I mean going back to the 1970s. And I would pick a character, I would find some imagery, as you can see here, some photographic imagery. And I would do a little Photoshop manipulation, meaning I would take a head from one photo and pop it on a body or, or take a couple of different images. I'd change the hair or change the angle. And, and then I would use that as my under, uh, not under drawing, but sort of under reference to be able to, um, to really capture the look and feel of the character that I was going for, the, uh, the celebrity, the, you know, the rock star or the hip hop artist or the, or in this case, the actor. And, um, it was, I started to become very successful at capturing the look and likeness and feel of the characters. So this one I feel is no exception. Um, the thing about Ralph Macchio is the guy is like, doesn't age. I mean, the man is timeless. Um, he was probably like 20 when he did this character and he, and he's, and he was supposed to be a teenager in, in high school. So, um, I, the trick is for a character who has a youthful quality to him or a person who has a youthful quality to them 
is to not over render the features of their face. Same rules apply for female characters, but in particular for people who are young. You don't want to add a lot of laugh lines. You don't want to add a lot of wrinkles. You don't want to add a lot of um, bags under their eyes or extra. You don't want to. You want to kind of distill the character into its the purest form, purest features, and capture those as accurately as you can without over rendering. That is an essential key element to getting um, youthful characters in play, especially like young kids rendering kids or teenagers or um, or, or females with soft features. Uh, so that's a huge trick. And, and, and so in captioning his face, the Ralph Marchio face here, if you notice, I really just kind of found the shadowed areas, right, right here you can kind of see it, and just only rendered them. Um, there is a little sort of some lines along the right side there. That's just to represent that highlight. Um, there's, a, there's a stark sort of like spotlight that hit the character's face on that photograph. Um, so here's another key element, and this is maybe a little different than some of the other, some of the other pop culture, uh, pop culture icons that I render in this series. Um, I focus heavily on the texturing of the cloth work or the the garment. Um, it's a big part of of any illustration, um, particularly if you're rendering characters who got clothes on. You want to kind of get the feel or the flow of the fabric, and if you notice here, like. You know, because it's that karate gi, it's it's kind of got a stiffness to it, um, and so when whenever you're rendering clothing that has a stiffness to it, you want to kind of have an edginess or a sharpness to your line. You don't want to have too many soft shapes because um, there are natural shapes that form whenever you're rendering clothing, um, and generally they tend to be soft depending on the material. And the material in this case again is that karate gi, so the idea is to catch the rigidity of it. So if you notice the sort of the lines, even the longer lines, yes, they curve, but this, you notice how things come to a point in certain areas? You can see it down there by the elbow. Um, and the reason that's there is just, again, to, to sort of emphasize the sort of like the rigid quality of that material. And um, also, if you notice in this particular piece, there's a lot of shadow. So even though in the photograph underneath, the gi is white on a dark background, you kind of see the crowd in the background, um, I wanted to indicate some of the shadowing, so, so what would be the mid-tones. So the only way that I know, um, particularly in a line art drawing, is to use this sort of cross-hatching. And the key element to cross-hatching, and I know I've met cross-hatching, and I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, is definitely um, drawing the lines and all in a similar direction. What happens, I think, a lot of artists, where they make a mistake in cross-hatching is they, they they draw the, <laughs> their lines, the cross-hatching lines in all kinds of different random directions. And it really plays with the flow and it messes up the flow and it makes it look messy. So I think what I really captured well here, hopefully you can see it, is that every single line, with few exceptions, kind of goes in the same direction. And that's what kind of forces the, uh, the eye or tricks the eye into thinking there's some dimension, um, there's some volumes volume happening with the uh, with the shapes that are formed from the cloth or from the clothing and um, another key element here that I want to focus in on is the hands you know it's the fist at the bottom and the sort of the hand in that sort of karate pose at the top of that uh, tiger claw or whatever <laughs> whatever Mr. Miyagi was teaching uh, Daniel son at the time but um it definitely it, it there's a tension that is created in the hands so I always am fond of saying every single time I do one of these videos, it's all about the face. It's always about always about the capture and the likeness. But sometimes, in addition to that, it's about capturing the tension, or capturing um, the body posture, or capturing a tilt of the head. Um, but you can do a lot. You can let the hands help tell the story. Hands can be um, sort of like the the co-stars, uh, along with the face in any successful portrait piece especially where the hands are included. And in this case, um, the hand, the tension that is created in that sort of, that upper hand and the little fist at the bottom uh, gives, gives it great tension. And then of course the angle too. You know, it's really cropped in. However, you know, just by me darkening the background and adding those spots in the background, it kind of gives you the sense that he's at, I think, the Mid-Valley uh, Karate Championships. But anyways, there we have it. Ralph Macchio, the Karate Kid. You know how we do it. Sketchy Goichi, live your moment.
Happy sketching, y'all. Please make sure you follow me on all the socials. Definitely like this video if you do. Like it even if you don't. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Peace.